Hello and welcome to the preventive precautions. Preventive precautions, isolation precautions uh, consist of the two types. We have the standard precautions and the transmission based precautions. Remember, isolation precautions are preventive steps needed to be taken by the healthcare providers in order to prevent the spread or transmission of infection. So we have standard precautions and we have also transmission-based precaution that consists of the contact precaution, droplet precautions, and airborne precaution. Starting with the standard precautions, these are set of infection control uh, practices that are used to prevent transmission of diseases in healthcare settings. They are normally designed to, apply, to be applied to the care of all patients, regardless of their infection status, and are based on the assumption that every person is potentially infected or colonized with a pathogen that could be transmitted to another person. So the key components of standard precaution include hand hygiene. So we practice hand hygiene for at least 20 seconds. We also use the PPEs, the personal protective equipment, where we'll be looking at the donning and the doffing. We also practice respiratory hygiene, uh, cough etiquette. We also have the safe injection practices, safe handling of contaminated equipment, and proper disposal of waste. When you look at the airborne precautions, uh, these are meant to prevent the spread of infection from one person who, uh, who is suspected to have the, the disease or unknown, okay, unknown uh, or, or known to have an infection that is normally spread by airborne, uh, airborne routes. So what are you supposed to do as an RN for a patient with suspected airborne infection? You need to place that patient in an airborne infection uh, prevention uh, isolation room that is monitored by negative pressure if available. You need to caution all people entering the room to wear a, ma a, a, a mask, uh, preferably the N95. And then you be aware that uh, staff members who aren't immune to vaccine preventable airborne diseases, they should not be allowed to come in contact with this particular patient. So we have uh, a number of examples of these airborne diseases and we can use the, the mnemonic, the marvelous cat hides in, where T stands for tuberculosis, M is measles, C is chicken box, varicella, then H we have herpes uh, zoster, the shingles, and uh, I is influenza. So the other diseases we have the COVID-19, we have also the Middle East, the Ma virus, the SARS virus, and so on and so forth. Next we have the contact precaution, and these are meant to prevent the spread of epidemiologically important infectious organisms through direct patient contact or indirect contact with the patient's environment. So as an RN, you need to place this patient in a single uh, patient room if possible. You need to wear a gown and gloves for all the interactions with the, the, the patient or the patient's environment. You remember, you need to follow up the uh, facilities infection control plan to determine when to initiate contact precautions. Some facilities will initiate contact precaution immediately, others later. So you need, really need to know exactly. Then you need to dedicate patient care equipment to a single patient if possible. So, so you avoid anything that to do with the enteric, that could be the fecal or the oral infection. Okay, some diseases could be transmitted via droplet, yet they require contact precautions. Okay, so you need to know how to put on the gloves and uh, how to put off the gloves. Like taking off the gloves, the, uh, the, the doffing, uh, you use the ABC order, where you start by the gloves, followed by goggles and gown mask. So that's why I said D, D, triple GM. And when you want to put on the gloves, donning, or you want to put on the PPEs, you do the reverse ABC for the Gs, but the mask comes second. So you start with the gown, followed by the mask, goggles, gloves. If you want to remember the 
num- number of diseases that can be or that require contact precaution, you use the mnemonic cool cats mouth very nicely. So cute. So that C stands for the Clostridium difficile. Uh, C, uh, M stands for the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, whereas V uh, stands for the vancomycin resistant Enterococcus, N for noro, norovirus, and S we have the scabies. We also have the malt resistant drug negative bacteria. We have herpes simplex, okay, the HCV. Empitigo, pediatric malsystem inflammatory syndrome, respiratory syncytal virus in infants and young children. We have pediculosis, conjunctivitis, the pink eye, the shingles for some cases, and the rotavirus in infants and young children. So all these diseases will require contact precautions. For droplet precautions, droplet precautions are designed to prevent the spread of infectious disease from close respiratory or mucous membrane contact with respiratory secretion from an infected person. So as an RN, you need to place this patient in a single room if possible. You put on a mask before entering the patient if you will be working within 0.9 meters of the patient. You dedicate patient care equipment to single use if possible and have the patient wear the mask if they are told they are being transported outside the room. So, these diseases require uh, require precautions that are transmitted through droplets precautions when an infected person maybe coughs, sneezes, talks or breathes. So, healthcare workers should use masks and patients are often placed in private rooms if private rooms are not available, you can group these patients based on the infection infection status. So, if you want to remember the different types of diseases that require droplet precaution, you can use the mnemonic, I really must protect my breathing. Safety always helps. So, I stands for influenza, followed by common cold, rhinovirus, mumps, rubella, German measles, bacterial meningitis, pertussis, streptococcus, uh, pharyngitis, adenovirus, infection, hemophilus influenza, and COVID-19 in some situation. Remember to wash the hands before you enter the room, uh, you wear the mask, and you protect the eyes using the face shields or, or the, the goggles. Make sure that the patient uh, is dedicated um, or disposable equipment is used in that case so that you clean and disinfect the shared equipment. Okay, so remember to check in with the nursing before entering the room and that is for the, for the visitors. So these are the transmission based precautions. Remember to access the free quiz in the description section of this link just to test your knowledge and reinforce your understanding.